So it is January 1st, 2023. Welcome to the Dominion Chalmers family. I was just thinking the other day that this time last year, we were locked out of the church. We were in the grip of yet another pandemic wave. So a lot of things can happen in 12 months. And so it's good for us now, the start of the new calendar year, to stop, pause, consider everything that has been over the last 12 months and what may be over the next 12 months. And to kind of get us started in our worship today, I want to take us back or even forward, if you prefer, to the book of Revelation, that great vision that weaves all the Bible together, the great reveal that vision in which John of Patmos writes, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. That ultimate vision, that great vision is what we all continue to work towards. And it is to that end that we start this year afresh. We begin by lighting of our Christ candle. The light of Christ is a wonderful gift, especially in the winter darkness. It is the light that clarifies our thoughts, calms our fears, gives our missteps, and offers direction and insight. As we gather in worship, at least in a digital connection, we light this Christ candle. Jesus Christ is with us. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And each year, I've kind of made a practice over the last number of years to do what's called a renewal of covenant. And it is based on a covenanted prayer written by John Wesley. And it's now part of what's generally called the John Wesley Renewal Prayer. And I want to offer that to you now. And in the hopes that as you hear these words, you too will get a sense of stepping into that that renewal of your covenanted relationship with God. I am completely yours, God. Show me what I need to do. Place me with the people you will, even if it hurts. Use my skills and set them aside as you need. Lift me up or bring me down. Give me what I need or don't. Because I freely offer to you my whole self. Holy One, my Creator, my Redeemer and my Sustainer. You are my God and I am your child. Let it always be so. And may these promises be blessed by your wisdom and love. Now, let us heed the call to worship and proclaim that it is God that gives us strength. It is God that blesses us with peace. Amen.
turn our attention now to hearing from God's word and then a poetic reflection on what that scripture is telling us today, at least as I sort of have moved into seeing it as such. Let me begin by offering you this prayer of illumination. We come before you today, O God, that we may know and experience the knowledge that we are your children. Help us to understand more fully the scope of your being and then live with this understanding in our day-to-day lives. Amen. Carrying on with what I've been doing the last number of weeks through Advent, drawing from the prophet Isaiah as the, as the, the prophetic wisdom and foundation for the birth of Christ, reading from Isaiah 63, verses 7 to 9, and again, reading from the message translation, because I think it, it, it brings a contemporary flavor to, to this beautiful passage, which comes at, towards the end of the book of Isaiah. So everything that has gone on before, an incredible story spanning over three centuries, and then God offers to, through Isaiah to the Israelite people this incredible vision. I'll make a list of God's gracious dealings. All things God has done that need praising. All the generous bounties of God, his great goodness to the family of Israel. Compassion lavished, love extravagant. He said, without question, these are my people, children who would never betray me. So he became their savior in all their troubles. He was troubled too. He didn't send someone else to bring them. He did it himself in person. Out of his own love and pity, he redeemed them. He rescued them and carried them along for a long, long time. From that translation of the prophet Isaiah, I offer you a kind of poetic response. Our God, God who spoke through Isaiah, to a nation that had seen so much heartache. God promised a savior, he delivered. Did the Israelite people deserve this savior? Do we who call ourselves Christian, do we deserve this? Have we earned it? Not a chance. All that God has done yet, we still look the other way. Don't expect me to serve God. I'll just keep praying that I can squeak through this life unscathed. Sorry, that's not good enough. There's work to be done. The journey continues. No one gets out of life unscathed. Have you made space in your New Year's resolutions for Jesus the Christ? I mean, really made space. Or is Jesus up there with all the other resolutions that will disappear by February? God knows this. God sees it. That is why God acted. Beyond our excuses, God rescues. Beyond our hurt, God heals. Beyond our vanity, God nurtures and inspires. Isaiah said that. Jesus would rescue them. Us, you, me, and carry, carry for a long, long time. So God took on human form and was born. Not even the devil saw that one coming. Quietly in some backyard stable, without pomp, ceremony, no crowds or hysteria. But oh, how the world was shaken. Men with all the power, they knew something threatening was happening. Quick, send out my spies, cried Herod. Bring me this child. What do you mean he is gone? Send the army. Kill all the children under two. See? Human butchery is never far away from the Prince of Peace. Wailing and lament. Rachel left weeping for her children, all of Israel in tears. That 
is the harsh reality that follows the light and sound and joy of Christmas. The angels declared, the choirs sang, heavenly sounds vibrated out. God's enemies countered. But like a good boxer, we duck and jive, bob and weave, and then counter back. In your life journey, keep countering. Keep the praise alive. Praise God, all you, his angels. Praise him, all you, his warriors. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, you morning stars. For our work is ours, and it is the work of the church, the beloved church. Oh, the places we will go this year. We're just getting started. you take this time to join with me in this community and pastoral prayer and I want to begin this prayer with a prayerful quote from Frank Borman from the Apollo 8 space mission in 1968 this was a prayer that he composed 
Give us, O oh God, the vision we can see your love in the world in spite of human failure. Give us the faith to trust your goodness in spite of our ignorance and weakness. Give us the knowledge that we may continue to pray with understanding hearts and show us what each one of us can do to set forward the coming day of the universal peace. From the promise and the potential of rocket ships in space, we come back to earth with renewed energy to move forward. We were lost, God, and found a new life and a new relationship with you through the power of Jesus Christ. Though we live in a world of brokenness, sin, and need, we find new energy to stand united in the name of justice. We find the courage to stand for what we believe to be the timeless and eternal truth of Jesus the Christ. We find the compassion and mercy to experience a real change in our hearts in the sharing of our lives in covenant with each other and with you, God. We have heard your call to be a people of, he of a healing community. We move from one year to the next in faith, in hope, and in love. We carry the same prayers of concern. We pray that the principle of peace embodied in the Christ child will somehow reach places of violence and despair in our world. We pray that the principle of justice embodied in the Christ child will somehow reach places of slavery, persecution, and cruelty. We pray that the principle of vulnerability embodied in the Christ child may inform our commitment to the dignity of life and the protection of vulnerable people. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, who was and is and will be again. Amen.
And as we move forward from our worship place, wherever that may be for you today, I offer you this blessing and sending forth. Let us go forth into this new year with a deep trust in God's sending that we may follow God's heart and not our own. Let us go forth bearing the name of Christ, that we may become as Christ to those whom we meet. And may the Christmas birth touch you this day and always. And may the trinity of hope, peace, and love go with you. Amen.